What do you do when the mains electricity supply cuts out? I've come to the Sunderland Royal Hospital to answer that very question. I'm about to meet Samantha McGowan, an engineer who designs and builds the solution to that very problem. So there's three different rooms that we can go look at. Through here, we have the fuel tank. It doesn't sound exciting, but it's very large. <laughs> the electricity goes down, power cut, and then it kicks over to this fuel tank. It will hold enough fuel to power the hospital for around 24 hours. Yeah. Power never really goes down yeah. for that long. So that's a lot of fuel in this tank. Yes. Where does it go? So it will go and feed the generators, which are essentially massive engines. So if you think about a car, a car needs fuel in order to run the engine. And it's the same here. It's just these engines are generating electricity. So yeah, this is the actual engine part. And then at this end, we have the alternator, which will convert the mechanical power of the engine into electricity. At this end, we have all of this sort of metal work going back here is soundproofing because a hospital doesn't want really, really loud generators running all the time. So they have certain standards. They need them to be quite quiet on the outside. So we can't actually connect these generators up to that massive one because it's too much pressure. We actually feed it into smaller tanks so that the engines can manage it a bit more easier. So how come you've got two? Because I see one there and one behind me. So it's what's actually called redundancy. So in the case of there's a power cut, we need the backup generator on, but what if it's got an error? We need a backup to the backup. Always belt and braces approach. It's very rare that the word life-threatening is literal, but in a hospital losing power, yeah. it's literally life-depending. Engines require a lot of airflow. Um, because that's how an engine works. They suck in air to create that combustion um, power. So we, and they also need it to keep cool. So in the roof, we have air inlets. The air outlets are pushed through the soundproofing we looked at. So these are to let lots of air in, to allow that constant flow of air for the engines. So up here, we have two main things. We have our air inlets that we saw in the room suck all the cool fresh air in to keep the generators cool and to work the engines. And then we also have the outlet. This is our exhausts for each generator. This, this whole uh, wall surrounding us yeah. really does conceal everything. So we're actually like right at the front and this building being built specifically for these generators, the hospital asked that we make it not look like a dirty, smelly, oily plant room. So they asked for this wall to be built to hide penthouse louver air inlets and to hide as much of the exhaust as we can. One of the challenges we faced was this is obviously to let air in, but we built a wall right next to where the air needs to be sucked in. So what we had to do is engineer vents in the wall to discreetly allow enough air to come in so that we can still get the right amount of airflow into the generators. So what I want to know from you is your kind of um, design work. The design teams will work and create 3D CAD models and different floor plans and layout. Can I see a couple of examples of like the kinds of drawings yes. that you might be dealing with? Yes, definitely. We can go have a look at those. This is like a room layout. So we've got a bird's eye view. So this is our fuel tank yeah, in this room. Yeah, we were room. standing right there. Right here, yep. Yeah. And then this is our two generator sets with our soundproofing, attenuation, and the two little tanks. So yeah, so that's where we were in. And then this is the switch room that we walked through. When the generators are operating, it will all channel through this area of the plant. This right? is what we call the brain of the generators. So each generator, has its own individual control panel. And then this is the common unit that will take the signals from each one and make sure they're both feeding equally at the same time. And if one's in error, the other one will kick in and take 
over the slack. Basically. So there's a bit of communication between yes. the two then? Yes, so there's communication between the two and also you can, when it's all a up and running, we'll be able to see on the screen which part of the hospitals is getting the power from the generators. To explain it simply, electricity is a bit like a wave. And what we need is for our generators to perfectly match the wave of the mains electricity so that it feeds in and it's not all lumpy bumpy and messes up all the electrical equipment. So this system will match the waves of the two generators together. This moment when this switches on is going to be an exciting moment, I guess, after yeah. all of this work. It's really exciting to get to see like such a big project come together and things that you've only seen on paper or on a computer, like in real life. Yeah. To think that it actually will save lives. Yeah. If needed. Yes. Is, yeah. It just puts that all into context, it's yeah. incredible. It's, it's what I find really exciting about my job. It's, it's really tangible and yeah, lots of problem solving and what I really, really like about it. Everything an engineer should be. Yeah. <laughs> it was so awesome meeting Sam today. Not only does she completely defy all stereotypes of what an engineer looks like, but it was also really crucial, I think, to get that awareness of backup power. It's not something I ever think about. In a place like a hospital, that needs to never stop running. The engineering that kicks in to make sure life-saving devices are always going just makes you realise the power of engineering. And that's where engineers really do make a difference.